All right, so I'm gonna take apart this power cylinder, which I made some 25 years ago, and it hasn't been opened since. I want you to see how you can even make these at home, as all of these parts were off the shelf at the hardware store, and I made uh, several power cylinders at that time. This was only one. Uh, so I honestly, I don't honestly remember what I did inside the cylinder, so I'll, I'll explain it when I see it. Uh, it'll also be a bit of an adventure because I'm doing this on the fly here. Uh, I may not even be able to get it open. I built this for the arm for my fifth rendition of my submarine robots. Now, one of the instructors at the science camp made a good suggestion, or at least I thought it was a good suggestion at the time, because the arm was going to be hydraulic. He suggested using corn oil for the hydraulic fluid at, as it is environmentally friendly. Well, as you are about to find out and experience firsthand, all hydraulics leak. That's a given. So whatever I use for hydraulic fluid will leak into the surrounding water. However, what I didn't know was that corn oil actually dries up and hardens into like a glue. So I soaked this whole cylinder in methanol for a couple of days trying to dissolve or at least loosen up any hardened corn oil because all of my cylinders became seized because of this. So let's start the teardown. This cylinder, it's brass, and it's actually the tailpiece from a bathroom sink drain. I cut off the flare on one end, and you can see that I attempted to seal the end of the tube against the head using silicone. Now, this can be done, but not in the way I did it here. I only put silicone around the joint on the outside. Now, when it hardens up, sure, it'll, it'll seal a little bit, but the reality is the hydraulic pressure leaking out between the cylinder and the head will simply peel away the silicone uh, by pushing from behind. Now, if I had actually laid down a thin layer of silicone on, say, the face of the head, and let it dry. Now it becomes a sheet of rubber on the head. And when I compress the cylinder against that sheet of rubber, it would make an awesome seal. It would make a gasket. So, or you can use uh, sheet rubber, which again, you can buy off the shelf at the hardware store in the plumbing section or in a craft shop. Or you could use uh, EVA craft foam, like I used in the cylinders in your kit. Uh, there's lots of better ways, but you know, I was learning at the time and this was either my first or second attempt at uh, making a power cylinder from scratch. These nipples again can be found in the plumbing section of your local hardware store. They are barbed tubing nipples, but they've got threads cut on one end. So I just drilled holes in the aluminum and then did a process called tapping, which is cutting threads into the hole. Uh, we'll go into that process in course four on prototyping, but basically you just use a tap to uh, cut threads. And I drilled two holes for this nipple, one going from the outside through the middle of the aluminum plate going this way and then a second one from the inside which simply intersected the first hole coming in on this tail plate i only had to drill and tap a hole through the aluminum plate and then screw in the same kind of nipple here now you can see i drilled and tapped holes for the bolts uh, but you can just drill these holes and then use nuts uh, like we did on the cylinders in your kit. Uh, it'll save you the work of tapping. On the head, you can see I have some angle aluminum held in place with the main bolts. Uh, but I've already removed a bearing mount I had coming off of this flange. 
which was the anchor for the cylinder and allowed it to rotate in operation. So this shaft is from an electronic cabinet that it's a standoff uh, from an electronic cabinet that was being scrapped at the school when I was working there. And in typical fashion, I stripped down the cabinet and kept everything from it. And here's why. This standoff is really long, round, and smooth. So I can use an O-ring to seal around it. And I'll show you the O-ring once I uh, crack it open. But for building your own, you can use a steel or aluminum rod and cut threads in the ends if you want. In this case, this standoff is just like the ones on your cylinder it's got a drilled and tap tapped hole on one end so i can easily put a screw in there to uh, mount the load or the other end of course has the screw going into the piston okay let's crack this puppy open Okay, so in this particular case, you, you don't need to do this, but I did in this case. I actually, uh, hopefully you can see that on camera, I actually cut this out and I would have used a computer controlled machi milling machine to do that. And all I did was I made a pocket in the aluminum plate that was the precise diameter of the cylinder. You don't need to do that. Uh, if you can, hey, great, go for it. Uh, it certainly helps uh, make things easier to seal. Well, let's see, I don't know if you can see down in there or not. Uh, let me get a light and some paper towels so I can clean this up a little bit here. Woo! I got me a light. I got my scuba diving light here. Okay, right, let's take a look in there. Okay, so you can see the piston. Uh, well, I'm going to see if I can get the head off first. Although, I guess if it's all seized together, I guess the, really the only thing that can be done is... Uh, well, I can pull the bolts out. Great, okay, I got the one head off. Ah. So for the head, you can see I have two aluminum plates which I cut and drilled holes through. The hole for the shaft uh, was just slightly larger than the shaft. And what I did was I drilled a hole, Let's see if you can see this, halfway through. In the di uh, halfway through one of the plates and the diameter of that hole was precisely chosen to get a decent compression on the O-ring. So I chose the size of the hole by simply choosing the size of the drill bit that I used. Now because the hole is only drilled halfway through, it makes a pocket between the sandwich of the head plates in which the O-ring sits and is squished properly to get just the right amount of seal on the shaft. Uh, too much compression and the shaft doesn't freely move on the O-ring. Ah. Too little compression and the seal leaks. Now 
Now it's not the end of the world, but any leak means a loss of pressure inside the cylinder and thus your cylinder loses power on the retracting stroke. And it doesn't take much of a leak to basically make your power cylinder useless. Okay, so I did the same thing with uh, this cylinder, or this aluminum plate, is I pocketed it on the milling machine as well. Now, I thought I had drilled a hole this way to intersect the hole from the nipple, but you can actually see there what I did was the pocket uh, came down deep enough so that it met the hole that I drilled for the nipple coming in from the side. So that's how the uh, hydraulic fluid gets into this end because there was a, uh, oh, that's right. This was on the inside. So this is meeting the, the cylinder. So the cylinder is around here and you can see that groove uh, actually directs the hydraulic fluid into the cylinder. All right, let's see if I can get this thing out. I don't know. Okay, so <laughs> okay, I did not remember this at all. This is not even close to what I remembered. All right, so what I originally had on here, which is pretty much corroded away, I had a steel washer on here, and this rubber seal happened to be just the right size that it matched this cylinder. So again, this is just, uh, this comes back to what I was saying in the first course, where keep everything you scrap. Uh, this is, uh, this looks like a control knob, I think. I'm not even sure what that is, honestly. I don't remember that. Um, so what I've done is I've got a, a screw going through the washer. I wonder if I can pull that off there. Oh, that looks like an Allen key on there. Okay, doesn't matter. Wow. <laughs> it's so rotted out that uh, I don't know if you can even see that or not. It's actually rotted the bolt out even. So let's see if I can get that out of there. Ugh. Now it's coming. You can actually see the, the corrosion on the bolt. After 25 years of sitting there with water and corn oil in the cylinder. So I did have a washer on there and there's a second washer on there. And all that did was to hold the rubber seal in place. It just basically made a sandwich. And you'll notice that this part here it's possible i machined that on a lathe because i was working at the school at the time and i did have the computer controlled lathe so i could precisely machine that down but i don't think i did that actually looks like it's a part that i stripped off a machine and this diameter combined with this rubber seal which i would have gotten at the uh, hardware store happened to uh, compress out just the, just the right amount of pressure to press the rubber seal against the inside wall of the cylinder. So what I want you to take away from this is, and here we go again, if you're scrapping stuff, keep it, because uh, if you don't have access to computer-controlled machines or a metal lathe, you can still make these at home. 
uh, as you can see here. Uh, you could possibly find um, washers of just the right diameter that match with an appropriate O-ring and match the, the diameter of whatever cylinder you get. And it just happens to compress the O-ring enough to get a decent seal, um, but not so much that it actually jams the piston. Now, most of you won't have access to a lathe, but if you do, you can actually cut soft metals like aluminum or brass, uh, even on a wood lathe, if you go nice and easy. And there's no reason you can't make one of these parts out of wood. Uh, wood will change in diameter. with It'll swell with uh, soaking up water, so that'll mess things up. But, I mean, there's really no reason you can't use wood for these parts. Or plastic. Uh, if you can get some thicker uh, plastic like... Uh, oh, I've forgotten the name of it. But most uh, food containers are made out of it. It's a really nice plastic to work with. Uh, I'd recommend staying away from hard plastics like acrylic, but you could use acrylic. Uh, you could use Delbrin. You could use Lexan. You can use, you know, whatever materials you want. The point is, you can make these and uh, you can make the sandwich, make the piston out of a sandwich of different sized discs, which you can cut yourself using a drill or whatever. Uh, the only critical size disc is the one which compresses the o-ring against the cylinder wall uh, you only have so much grace there and you have to be very precise on the size but again depending on the cylinder you use you might luck out and find some washers that happen to be just the right size uh, you will need to lubricate the cylinder though uh, if you get the compression right so there you have it a scratch built home built cylinder which can be used with either air or hydraulics.